Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to PRI 2021, day three. We are in Indianapolis, Indiana, still, and uh, this is the final day of the performance racing industry show. And uh, yeah, we got about uh, another half of the show to do today. Plus, I got to do Machinist Row. Plus, I got a couple things I want to check out specifically, a couple of vendors I really want to talk to. Um, so I'm going to speed through a lot of this as much as I possibly can. I'm going to stop by as much as I possibly can and cut in as much as I possibly can. But I have a whole lot to see today. So this may get a little truncated. I may not just do the whole make you sick, run through the show type thing. So if you guys are interested, appreciate you guys watching day one and day two. Here comes day three. So yesterday we wrapped up uh, about the middle of room B, which I'm currently in. The middle of that room is over yonder. And I'm going to this direction. So I'm going to start off on that wall, work my way back towards the middle of the show. That way I can kind of meet myself, I guess. This is a much busier day on Saturday. There is a whole lot more people here. We'll see if we still have some good conversations. Then. Street Outlaws. I've mentioned this in both the day one and day two videos, but if you haven't seen those, you probably haven't heard this yet. One of the wonderful things about the PRI show is the ability to network. You are in a room, in a building with some of the best and the best in the industry. As far as vendors wise goes, they're everybody. Everybody is here. It doesn't matter if it's circle track racing, drag racing, power boats, dirt track, doesn't matter. It's all here. Everybody is here. Anybody who's anybody who has product that wants to be in the racing industry, they're all here. Also, you're just randomly going to run into people that are, you know, TV personalities or people that you've seen on YouTube or whatever. There are tons of them are here. All, obviously, I just saw Doc just a moment ago. Basically, all of the street outlaws are here from Memphis, from New Orleans, uh, from Oklahoma. You've got people that are YouTube people. Um, yesterday, we had a, a morning where we had, you know, conversations with a bunch of people who are YouTube stars. <clears throat> and today will probably be the same thing. Again, wonderful place to network. If you're interested in the racing world, if you want to be in the racing world, if you want to develop yourself in the racing world, this is definitely something to put on your schedule every single year.
you're a Ford guy, you may know what that car is and what that motor is that's in there. <laughs> Don't be afraid, guys. Come on. I know you want to. You can't have a turbo shirt on. You drive a turbo car? There ain't no bumping in. <laughs> you got the right tune up in it? Another one bites the dust. So this is Kill Devil Diesel. We actually just recently started doing business with these guys. Um, something that doesn't make it on the channel a whole lot is the fact that we do a ton of six liter Ford repair. And these guys are pretty much the end all be all as far as new heads for six liter diesels. So one of the things we oftentimes run into an issue with is we need to get the heads reconditioned. Uh, in that case, we gotta set them off, we gotta have new seats put in them, and then all kinds of other things done depending on what has been damaged to the heads, or they could be just totally toast. Kill Devil actually has a brand new set of heads for a six liter that comes ready to rock and roll out of the box, uh, which is something that's very, very in demand right now because there's a ton of people that are putting money into these six liter diesel trucks um, and with a superior product beyond what the original OEM manufacturer gave us, um, they've taken a lot of weakness points out of the out of those heads. So, uh, very cool product. Definitely, definitely a big fan of these guys. You will see more of their product in more of our trucks in the very near future. All right, I am going to revisit actually something that we talked about on the day one video. Um, we're gonna go back to Fields Engineering and I wanna show off a little bit more about this car because I realized I didn't talk about it at all. It's actually a really significant vehicle and I really wanna show this thing off and talk to the guys over there. So uh, next stop, Fields Engineering. That's, a, that's excessive. The turbo I've ever seen. Yeah. 
<laughs> For reference. This is from Fields Auto Works in Plain City, Ohio. Plain City, right Ohio. down the street from us. And I wanted to talk about this car because it's something that... It, this is not just like a kit car. No. So give me the spiel on what this thing is. Okay, so we, we being Fields Auto Works, we designed and built this car in-house. We deliver either complete rolling chassis or complete cars with engines and transmissions. A rolling chassis is a complete car. It's ready to, ready to go, only it doesn't have an engine and transmission. Okay. So the, uh, the buyer can either put their own engine and transmission in it, or they can employ one of our service providers to put an engine and transmission in it for them. Okay. That allows a path for, to have the car registered for street use. So this is not just a purposeville going out on the racetrack and blasting around like mid-Ohio. You could actually technically get this thing registered to be able yes, you can. to drive it on the road. Right. So the reason we have rolling chassis and service providers is so you can, when you go to get the car registered, you'll have a, a, an invoice that says, this is where I bought the rolling chassis, as, as you would typically through the kit car industry, although we're not a kit car. I gotcha. Uh, but it's the same process. And then you have an invoice that says, this is where I bought an engine and transmission for it. Okay. And the state trooper that does the inspection will say, okay, there's two different things. You have proof of where you bought the chassis and proof of where you bought the motor. Nothing's stolen. You're signed off. Go get your tags and register. Awesome. So we were talking a bit off camera about some of the things that are really cool about this is if you're getting into racing, especially like open wheel racing and, and, and road course racing, it can be a really expensive cost of entry oh, yeah. and cost of maintaining those toys. Yeah. So the, yeah, one of the I, main things the car, with this... Buying the car is generally just the, the, the price of admission to spend money. Right. Congratulations. Yes. You can now spend a whole bunch more money. But with this, it uses a lot of like off-the-shelf normal manufacturing. Yes, when when we when we set out to to think of of the concept of what the car should be to be ideal an ideal owner experience, we wanted the car to be fun, mm -hmm. and that starts with making the car easy to drive and quick. So, light goes a long way there. Light also means that you don't have to have big horsepower to make the car go in a straight line fast. So, light also means, and by the way, horse, more horsepower never helped you turn or stop. True. So, light means the car is quick with an existing amount of power. It also means it stops and turns better. Right. That makes the car more fun without having to spend big money on big power. That makes sense. So, to that said, we have this simple little 2.3 Ford EcoBoost out of the current generation Mustang as a motor. So this is just a Ford crate motor out of a... Actually, we do buy it from Ford as a crate motor. They sell it out of their Ford Performance Parts Division. Okay. And uh, it has the Ford factory ECU and wire harness in it. Okay. And, and it runs the standard Ford tune. It makes 300 horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque. But that means that this little 1,800-pound car, 1,800 pounds being about 600 pounds lighter than your average Miata, that's cr 600, 600 pounds lighter. 600 pounds lighter than this typical Miata. Yeah. Whoa. So, if you took the motor out of a Miata, it would still be heavier than this car. <laughs> wow. So, the uh, 600 pounds lighter than a Miata and more than double the power. That's crazy. So, the, the car is light, which may, makes it go really fast for the 300 horsepower it has. For sure. You don't think of the EcoBoost motor as being sexy until you put it in an 1,800-pound car, and all of a sudden, when you sure. step on the gas, it gets real sexy. Sure. And if you really honestly want more power, there's options oh, the, to go more. Ford will be glad to make more power for you. The, and it's not... You can literally just get a new tune. Yes. So Ford, through Ford Performance... The, by the way, if you buy the, the motor in the car from us, it comes with a Ford two-year warranty. Oh, okay. And if you buy the, the turbo upgrade and the tune upgrade from Ford Performance, it does not board the warranty and we go from 300 wheel horsepower to 450 wheel horsepower. <laughs> so the, with 300 horsepower, the car is, weighs six pounds per horsepower, which is better than most of the supercars on the road. Yeah. And when you go to do the 
tuned upgrade, now you're in the better than five pounds per horsepower range, and it's really stupid fast. That's almost probably, as, as bad as it is to say this, almost maybe too much power. No, not really, because the chassis works so well, the car handles so well, and puts down power so well, that at 300 horsepower and 1,800 pounds, we're not overpowering the chassis of the tires. Wow. It can put it all down. It just pins you in the seat really hard. Well, and the, we, were, we were discussing before about one of the major benefits of the fact that this thing weighs so little is you don't need like massive ungodly brakes. Yeah. Because it's light, you don't, you're only stopping, you know, you don't need a huge brake yeah, kit. The, 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 the physics says that energy goes up with the square of the speed. Right. So the, you, you, want, you want to go fast, so you're not going to go slower to try to save the brakes, but you can certainly take the weight out. Sure. And brakes simply turn kinetic energy, which is motion, this, the car going down the track, into heat. Right. Through friction. So if you can, you're not, you, you want to go faster, so you're not going to slow down and save the brakes. But the car will stop better if it's lighter. Right. Because there's less energy to dissipate through heat. Sure. So the brakes don't get as hot, so you don't need as big of brakes. Which so, are also so lighter. It's also lighter. The brakes themselves are lighter. Right. They're also cheaper. Like right. A lot. Also true. Very and true. And most importantly, they last a whole lot longer. The set of brakes on this car will last you the better part of a full season. Wow. As opposed to a big, heavy you know, Camaro Mustang, stuff like that, you're probably putting brake pads on every weekend. Right. The same and these are, are these factory, like, Mustang type brakes? No. The, those are, uh, those brakes are made by Willwood. They're a, a pure racing style brake. Okay. Uh, but they're the most common racing style brake. Okay. So those calipers are are true four piston racing uh, brake calipers, but you can buy them from Jector Summit for 92 bucks. Wow, okay. The rotors are about the same price. A set of rotors will last you a season or more. A set of brake pads will last you most of a season probably. Wow. So the car is super easy on things like brakes and tires. The car is so light, it doesn't really work the tires real hard. They don't get hot, so they don't burn them up. You'll get multiple weekends out of a set of tires. That's fantastic. So the idea being that we lower the cost of operation. By it, and the lightweight goes a long way towards achieving that. So I'm seeing here that there's a second set of belts yeah, in here, the, and you've got the... Yeah, we had the passenger seat out of the car just so that you can see the the, in, the construction of the interior a little better. Okay. Um, but the car is a true two-seater, and the uh, you'll notice the wide center console. One of the things we wanted to be, be sure of in designing the car was that the cockpit wasn't cramped. Yeah, it's not bad at all. If you've driven, if you if you've driven something like a Miata or um, you know an early Corvette or something like that, you you find out real quick that your your shoulders right up against you know yeah. your passenger, the other person in the cockpit, and the little narrow co cockpit confines. This car's not like that at all. Very roomy cockpit. I'm six three, over two hundred pounds, and I fit in the car just fine. And you could have a passenger with, in there with, with you, no problem. Yeah, we can put two over six footers in the car, no problem. Wow, very comfortable. So how long have you guys been building these cars? Well, we started construction on the first batch of customer cars a couple of months ago. Okay. Uh, we'll be delivering the first customer cars in January. Okay. Uh, and uh, we really just launched the, the company publicly, and when I say publicly, I mean we pulled back the curtain and said, hey, we're here doing business and building race cars. Right. We did that. Uh, about end of March, 1st of April. Okay. And uh, we started taking customer orders then. Uh, we got enough orders to build a batch of cars, so we started building cars in the fall. Um, lead time on a new car is four to six months-ish, depending on uh, the configuration, whether you're buying a roller with let's see engine or a complete car. Um, and we've uh, got about a dozen orders in, uh, or I should say a dozen cars to build. Uh, for customers, including a development car for the other car that we built, the Scioto. Yeah, I saw the, the graphics of that thing. It's here on the banner. This is your... Would, would this be like a Mark II kind of project? Well, this is a, a, a generation up in performance over the, uh, the Cardinal. 
Uh, the, the Cardinal is kind of a GT car, it's, you know, comparable to a Porsche 911 GT3. Okay. Uh, the Scioto is more in the supercar realm. Um, you know, Lamborghini, Ferrari, um, McLaren. <laughs> and it can come with all kinds of different engine options. Yeah, we have like. a range of engine options available for everything from the supercharged V6 all the way up to V12s. Um, we can go pretty much as fast as you want. And it's going to keep the same as far as OEM parts same, type thing? The same theory in design and construction as the Cardinal in that the parts are easily serviceable, easily sourced off the shelf, and for the most part affordable. So the, you, you figure a uh, McLaren's a two, three, four hundred thousand dollar car that a typical track day weekend, a set of brakes is 30 grand, a set of tires is three grand. Yeah. Um, very expensive cars to operate, and Lord knows you wouldn't want to crash one. Right. You, know, you crash your McLaren, you're probably you know, 30 to 100 grand to fix, you know, even for a simple crash. The Sayota packages for the Sayota start about 115. Okay. And you can have a track ready car for about 130. Wow. So that's, uh, but with performance that would exceed any of the supercars you could buy for three, four times that price. And if I do happen to mess up the brakes or engine work or whatever, I can buy parts from a dealership. I don't have to buy parts from well, you. You can buy parts from Jigs or something. Yeah. And have them tomorrow. And I don't have to go directly through you guys no. to fix anything on this you thing. You can. We sell them for the same prices that you can buy them online, but um, you can buy them wherever you want. Cool. And it's the same philosophy applies. If you don't crash the car, you probably have no need to buy parts from me. Sure. Well, that is a heck of a machine. I want to play with one. <laughs> I mean, it's it's honestly, other than the fact that it's in green, the first thing it really brings to my mind is like a Lotus type thing. Is it's simplify, add lightness, like make it. Absolutely. And and the the reason why Lotus did that and has maintained that for. 50, 60 years is because the formula works right. every time. Right. Now the difference between us and Lotus is Lotus made all their parts in the little cottage workshop behind you know a right. barn in right. the middle of England, and uh, we're buying parts from commonly available suppliers in the industry now, and, right. and just fabricating the chassis and body and stuff that typically doesn't have to be serviced and building that interest. Yeah. So the, the and because we're domestic, we're here in the U.S. Right, Columbus. It, excuse me, Plain City. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you're not waiting for something to come, you know, from the U.K. Right. And, and, and the nightmare that just supply chain is. Yeah. If, if UPS or FedEx can find you and not lose the package, you can have it tomorrow. That's awesome. That, that's a that's a very cool machine. I'm I'm, I'm excited to see these things all over the place on track days. I I, I mean I, I totally get the point of why you would want to do this versus spending tens of thousands of dollars modifying your own car and not necessarily getting it anywhere near the capabilities of what this thing comes out of the box. Well, you spend the same amount of money for a Mustang, Camaro, or Corvette and go slower right. at greater cost per event. Right. And if you crash it, you'll spend a whole lot more money then. Yeah. So it's, uh, and it's more fun to drive, honestly. I mean, with the power to weight ratio, I'm sure it's gotta be an absolute hoot to well, drive. Those those cars are all designed first as street cars. Correct. This was does not have that limitation. It's designed first and foremost as a race car and, and track car. And as such, the geometry isn't compromised for all sure. of the things that compromise street cars, packaging, cost, manufacturing process, all of the parts bin availability, all right. those things. You know, when, when you're gonna build you know, small, relatively small numbers of a Mustang or Camaro compared to you know an F-150 or a GMC Sierra. Yeah. Um, you've got to go raid the parts bin because they sure. they don't want to have to design from right. scratch for so many parts, and that's not the case with us. So you're making all of those compromises uh, with Ford. Now that you know, Ford did a great job engineering the new Mustang, and Chevy did a great job engineering the ZL1 Camaros. Those are great cars, but when you 
put one of those against one of these, this car is faster, it's cheaper, it's lighter, it's more fun, it's lower cost, it's, it's all of those superlatives. It, but it's not a Chevrolet or a Ford, obviously. Right. Um, and we don't have the limitations that they had. They started with the standard run-of-the-mill daily driver Camaro right. and then tuned it up. And we started with a clean piece of paper to go fast on track. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for talking with me, thank sir. Thank you. That was wonderful. Have I really appreciate it. Uh, these guys are like literally down the street from us, so this will not be the last time you see and one of these things. To, to call us up, go to fieldsautoworks.com, hit, hit the contact us button and schedule the shop tour. I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> You're welcome. We, you will see more of this thing. Um, I want one of these. I really do. It's such a, it's such a pure like track car but without the massive stupid expenses of going after a really, really, truly expensive track car. Yep. So all the bang for a little buck. Yeah, perfect. All right, back to the show. Well, that was awesome. I honestly can say that I really want one of those things. I think they're, the, the appeal of it to me is amazing because it's a purpose-built race car. It's not a street car that's been modified to be a race car. It is purpose-built to do what it's doing. And the fact that it weighs less than a Miata and makes more power. Let me, let me restate what he was saying. Take the engine out of the Miata and that car still weighs less than a Miata and makes twice the power. When Miata is always the answer, what does that make that? Anyway, thanks very much for those guys. Um, you will probably see more of that in the very near future on our channel. I'm going to have to go down there and visit those guys because their production facility is literally like right down the street from us. So we will, we will definitely show off some more of that stuff. If you guys have any questions or anything, obviously you can find them online. Um, but you will see some more of their stuff here at our channel here in the not too distant future. All right, let's wrap up a little last bits of the show and then head home. Been a long weekend already. Derek is over here like, I'm ready to go home. <laughs>
forgot my hat. All right. Just because you can build a thing doesn't mean you should build a thing. But this is awesome. And I don't think this is going to really translate on camera just how wide these hips are. But that's a whole lot of hips. This is actually awesome. It's a dually. It used to be a farm truck. How cool is this thing? That's awesome. Oh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. I very much appreciate that. <laughs> you watch day one or day two? Okay, day one. Okay, day two I got done and uploaded at midnight last night. So yesterday is already up and you'll have tonight up, or today up tonight. Thanks. This thing is insane. Oh, look at <laughs> look at the, look at all the things. That's the question. What an what a piece of machinery. I mean, there's got to be a hundred thousand dollars in carbon fiber. Uh, it, it just the roof, but things. <laughs> This is on two thousand hours. This thing is amazing. What a vehicle. All right, so what's sexier? This or the tractor from yesterday? <laughs> Have you seen the tractor? You need to see the tractor. Well, there you go, folks. First uh, PRI, what'd you think? That was very cool. Yeah. A lot of really unique stuff here. Oh, for sure. It's definitely an eye-opener. Really cool to talk to some of the people that you know, we use their products. Or uh -huh. Stuff like that. It, and the nice thing is, we were just talking with the crazy gentleman that just built that black, uh, I guess you would call it a tractor, that uh, that we had in yesterday's video, in the day two video. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those like, why not build it? He had the stuff, he had the, the 7.3, he had the tractor, the tractor's been in his, his family since his grandfather bought it brand new. Um, you know, they built it for SEMA and it's easily one of the coolest vehicles in this entire building, which is saying a lot because there's... <laughs> All kinds of a lot of amazing vehicles in this building, but uh, yeah, the neat thing is it's like literally, you know, it's everything. It's it's EV vehicles, it's drag racers, it's dirt track cars, it's anything that that likes to go fast, regardless if it's in a straight line or around a corner or over something. It's all in this building, so definitely an amazing experience at PRI. I had a, I had a great time. I'd like a lot more sleep. It's been a really long, <laughs> this has been a really long couple of days, so. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. We're gonna wrap it up here. Um, I gotta get out of here and get back to Columbus, get this video edited so I can get it up tonight so you guys can see day three on day three, because that's what I do. It's too much work. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, that wraps up PRI 2021 from here in Indianapolis, Indiana. As always, click on the subscribe button, drop us a comment in the comment section below, click on the like button. We'll see you on the next one. I have absolutely no idea what that's gonna be next, but we'll bring it to you. Take care.